Oklahoma is home to many famous names in history, from Will Rogers and Tom Mix to astronaut Thomas Stafford. This month, OETA's documentary series, Back in Time, explores the exploits of Oklahomans like Pretty Boy Floyd, Ma Barker, and Machine Gun Kelly, names as infamous as the bloody trail they left along Oklahoma's gangster road. Long before Oklahoma was a state, it was a haven for outlaws. In our rich and very colorful history, there is a direct line from the state's outlaw past to the present. George Barker and Arizona Donnie Clark had four boys. When her husband abandoned the family, she went by the name Kate Barker, but her boys called her Ma. Her and her boys moved to Tulsa when the boys, the oldest boy was around 10 years old. Um, she had a hard time making ends meet, and she let them run rough shot. The boys quickly graduated from petty crimes to serious felonies. On January the 8th, 1922, the gang was involved in a burglary in Oak Mulkey. A gunfight began that left one gang member dead and police captain Homer Spaulding fatally wounded. The popular image of Ma Barker as the gang's criminal mastermind has been found to be just a story. Her role was in taking care of gang members, who often sent her to the movies while they committed crimes. The, the movies and, and um, radio and, and Hoover at the time said she was the brains behind the Barker gang and she was the one making the order. She was a, you know, the rough and tumbling mom that, that controlled everything when in fact, Harvey Bailey said that she couldn't even plan breakfast. Just before daybreak on January 16, 1935, FBI agents surrounded Ma and Fred Barker inside a lake house near Oklawaha, Florida. What followed was the longest gun battle the FBI was ever involved in. In four hours, agents riddled the house with over 1,500 bullets. The FBI report said Ma Barker died clutching a Tommy gun. They're all buried here in Oklahoma uh, in a cemetery uh, outside of Welsh, Oklahoma, up uh, near the Kansas border. The uh, early days of the FBI uh, uh, were uh, heavily influenced by Oklahoma and Oklahoma people. One of the things that J. Edgar Hoover did to uh, enhance the uh, FBI and to help his men in the field uh, was to hire some lawmen who had the kind of experience necessary uh, to confront some of these outlaws. He found some of those kind of men in Oklahoma City. Hoover hired three veteran Oklahoma City police officers, Clarence Hurt, Jerry Campbell, and D.A. Jelly Bryce. Bryce would become the FBI's deadliest gun. Uh, they taught these, these uh, young attorneys out of, out of law school with a, with a shiny new badge on, they taught them how to use a firearm, how to shoot it, shoot it accurately, how to reload under fire, and, um, and how to be a gun-toting lawman. In 1937, we get a bit of a change in the law enforcement establishment when the Oklahoma State Legislature creates the Department of Public Safety. So suddenly you have a statewide law enforcement organization that can coordinate between counties. In 1938 and 39, the Highway Patrol puts together their own radio system where the troopers in the field can listen to a dispatcher who is saying that there's just been a bank robbery in Bristow and we need the troopers in Chandler to set up a roadblock on Route 66. By coordinating techniques and technology between the FBI, OSBI, and the State Highway Patrol, the violence that had cost so many innocent people their lives was coming to an end. By 1935, the big-name bank robbers were either dead or behind bars. <laughs>